Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins, my sin, my soul, Lolita. The tip of the tongue taking a trip of three steps down the palate to tap at the teeth on three, Lolita. She was low, plain low in the morning, standing four feet ten in one sock. She was Lola in slacks, she was Dolly at school, she was Dolores on the dotted line, but to me, she will always be Lolita. I memorised that when I was 16 because I loved the idea of loving this book. I was drawn in by the taboo subject matter and the charming narrator. So I committed to memory the words of a paedophile preying on an innocent child. Hello, welcome to my video about Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. This opens up with a letter from fictional John Ray Jr. editing the manuscript of fictional <laughs> Humbert Humbert, um, who had written his memoirs in jail before he died awaiting trial. Humbert Humbert is a self-described handsome European man. He has a predilection for what he calls nymphettes, which are prepubescent girls that are sort of coquettish and something, something. This stemmed from a prepubescent relationship that he had with a girl called Annabelle, and we catch up with him in the story. Well, other stuff happens. Anyway, he's in his late thirties. He moves to the US, he's lodging in a house, and then he comes across this girl the daughter of the landlady, uh, Charlotte Hayes, um, the girl Dolores Hayes. Dolores is 12 years old when Humbert meets her and gives her the nickname Lolita. And he spends the majority of the book uh, grooming her and isolating her and raping her. This is a masterpiece. The writing is languorous. You get this insight into how Humbert thinks, which is um, grand and cerebral. And it makes for really, really absorbing reading but this book is absolutely cursed and I hate it and I don't want to touch it again. I first read it when I was 16 um, and then I reread it when I was 20. Um, interestingly enough, that was seven-ish years ago and I made a video on this channel about Lolita and it completely lacked critique. The reason I decided to reread it and make this video about it is after listening to the Lolita podcast by Jamie Loftus, which is a 10 part deep dive into how Lolita became an icon and her prolific misrepresentation in media um, from the cover art uh, to theater and film adaptions and also to music and fashion. It is an incredible podcast, um, so well researched, so sensitive and dives so deeply into um, the subject matter, including sharing the details of um, the young girls who have played Lolita in various adaptions and, and how their lives went on and even interviewing some. I really, really implore you to listen to it if you're interested in this subject. I think what it comes down to for me is a societal delusion that was manufactured mostly by men in the film industry, um, that Dolores was a seductress and that Humbert was to be sympathized with, which turns the book from being taboo in a repulsive way to taboo in a sort of exciting and intriguing way. And that was the lens through which I read it when I was 16 and 20. I had this vision of um, Dolores as being, yes, a young girl, but a young girl with sexual agency and a man who is <laughs> very charming and humorous um, and sympathetic and enjoying being like, this is pedophilia, it's wrong, but like, in this situation, it's right. And then reading it now with my eyes open, it's astonishing how wrong that lens is. It's actually so painful. I couldn't have sex while I was reading this book because it felt um, so cursed. <laughs> Dolores is clearly being held against her will and manipulated into doing things that she doesn't want to do and she barely has any dialogue in the whole book apart from when she is explicitly um, like defying Humbert Humbert's like whimsical romanticizations of, of what's going on. If you go into this with the preconceived notion that Lilita is a child seductress, um, it's pretty easy to go on believing that because, you know, she has a, she has a crush on Humbert when he first um, moves into their family home because he's interesting and handsome and it's totally normal for, for young girls to have crushes on like older powerful men in their lives. And when he does make a move on her, she is frozen. Um, and at some points you, you see this slither of being interested in it because 
you know, he's he's older, he knows what he's doing, he's probably right. I'm getting that thing that I actually wanted. I wanted that, right? I wanted to be with this man. That's why I had a crush on him, right? But no, she's 12 years old. She's 12 years old. She can't consent to anything and she wouldn't even want to. I read this as a narrative of a young person with sexual agency because that's what I wanted to feel like I was. I mean, I was 16, technically that's the age of consent in the UK, but I didn't really know anything. If I was approached by someone that was much older than me, um, I always liked the idea of um, being older and being perceived as older and um, being able to take that power for myself. For example, one of my favourite characters in um, fiction is Lux Lisbon in The Virgin Suicides. Um, she is one of five sisters and she is 14 years old and she is um, the seductress of the sisters. But then when I'm starting to think about that in context of this, it's, it's, a, it's cries of desperation from a girl that wants to feel like she has bodily autonomy and feels like the way she can achieve that is by choosing to let other people have access to her because if she's choosing it, um, then it feels like some sort of control. I'm sort of going off on a tangent here, but I just wanted to express that while I don't think Dolores was asking for it, her um, having any signs of being interested in it or interested in Humbert does not in any way give him permission to do any of the things he did. I'm just so angry that this narrative has been able to be warped so much that it is about this, this charming man that happens to be a paedophile rather than being the devastating story of this, this young girl's life being stolen from her. It's something that Nabokov was really um, clear about, like he didn't ever want uh, an image of Dolores to be on the cover of the books because he knew that that would be more of a cause for objectification and sexualization of this young girl. He honestly wrote it to be a sad story about a sad girl um, and to test whether you could be manipulated into liking this horrible character and it's a test that we largely as a society have completely failed. So this has been a video on Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Um, it's a masterpiece of a book, it's a very incredible book because it toes so many lines and really really forces you to engage with it um, but I just feel so let down by everything. I feel so let down that like the educational system treats this as like an interesting book to read about a, a child seductress. I feel so let down that um, like I'm not allowed to like Jeremy Irons anymore because I didn't realise what a dick face he was. I feel so let down um, that I found this like inspirational as a teenager and that like no one has corrected that. It's taken more than a decade. Uh, and with all of that context, it's really, really fucking difficult to read and I never want to read it again. Um, something that Jamie Loftus reflects on at the end of the podcast. She's like, I've read this so many times. I've been so deeply engaged with this text and it haunts her um, because it's haunting subject matter and, and it's haunting um, in the way that, that it's been manipulated um, since it's was published in 1955. I mean, even before then, it, it was really hard for Nabokov to get it published in a way that he felt held true to the purpose of the text. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope it becomes a popular video, to be honest, because people still watch my old video of Lolita regularly, still gets comments, gets plenty of views, and um, I'm just waxing lyrical about the, the the poetry of the prose and not about how fucked it all is, which is really tragic. I'm gonna leave a disclaimer on that video now to watch this one instead. Uh, and who knows, maybe in 10 years, years time, I'll do another video about this and I'll have a completely different interpretation of it. Um, but that is the nature of growth, I suppose. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please leave your thoughts in the comments and I will see you soon.